All right, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Konnichiwa. It's proper boiling in Japan at the moment. I live in Sapporo in the northern island of Hokkaido, the biggest prefecture of Japan. Today it was 28 degrees, and I have to shut my windows because my neighbors are so bloody loud that if I leave them open, you'll probably be able to hear their dog screaming, them screaming, them watching anime. And it's not about them watching anime, it's about me watching anime, and I want you to focus on me. I've closed the window, I'm sweating. You can probably see the sweat dripping down my forehead as we speak. So that's the dedication I have for you guys. Today, I will be watching Jujutsu Kaisen. My teacher recommended this anime to me, and he was like, this is all everyone across Japan is talking about at the moment. I literally don't know anything about this anime, but my teacher did say it's got fighting in and it's got monsters in and as we all know they're two things i love so without further ado let's recap episode one we start out with a teenage boy waking up with his arms tied behind his back an ominous figure greets him while the boy looks around at his surroundings Ooh. the mysterious figure asks which one the boy is and the boy thinks he recognizes the other man before the man answers for him. Yeah, I'm Satoru Gojo, bruv, and I'm in charge of the first years at school. It's only then that the boy realizes he's tied up. The figure says that there's no point worrying about anyone else as a secret execution has been imposed on him. Boom, <laughs> intro. We go back to the main character in his house, presumably before the events of the intro. He's calling the hospital, asking about his granddad, and it's here that we first learn the main character's name, which is Yuji. But his granddad has no interest in him visiting. And it's like, boy, shut your mouth and instead socialize and join some school clubs and stuff. Not put off by his granddad's remarks, Yuji's like, nah, I'll go tomorrow, see ya. The camera pans to another random teen who opens up some strange storage thing hoping to find something. But dun dun dun, it's gone. He calls his mate and has some banter on the phone before the scene changes to a high school. We're introduced to Sasaki Senpai and Iguchi Senpai. By the way, little Japanese lesson here. Senpai literally doesn't have a translation into English. It's kind of used as a respective term for someone older than you, usually in the same positions like the workplace or school. And Kohai is referred to people younger than you. So Senpai, older, Kohai, younger. This is basically a learned Japanese channel as well. So two for one. Anyway, turns out they're playing some Ouija board type game thingy-me-jiggy. A student from another club burst in and is like, oi, give us your space for my club, please. Sasaki explains how the rugby team heard strange noises on the field before becoming ill shortly after. Thus, they have interest to try and solve it. But the other student is like, nah, don't give a shit because Yuji, you're in the track and field team. So there's only two official members in this club and you need three and I can shut you down. Even the track and field manager bursts in and is like, dude, we need you for the competition and challenges Yuji to a battle. If Yuji wins, he'll be left alone. So he's like, fine, I'll do it, sensei. The guy we saw before is now at the high school following a curse and he encounters demons flowing through the school grounds and climbing up random poles. Although he does nothing about it and carries on his day as if nothing happens. Hmm, suspicious. The teacher, meanwhile, throws a shot put 14 meters, getting close to the Japanese record. And everyone's like, whoa, dude, you're amazing. We love you, but not in a weird, creepy student-teacher relationship way that's so prevalent in Japan. Yuji then throws it normally and easily reaches 30 meters, leaving the manager with eyes literally popping out of his head. The three musketeers are happy because they can continue their club. The end. Oh no, it's not. Curse chasing dude and Yuji make eye contact, but words aren't exchanged, and Yuji heads off to hospital to meet his granddad. On the way, he brushes the curse following dude, allowing him to glimpse some of the hidden energy that Yuji carries. Yuji's angry granddad is like, don't end up like me, have some friends, join every school club, stop visiting me, and he's like, whoa, all right mate, calm down. Anyway, he dies. Yuji is signing the death certificate. The curse following dude from before shows up and introduces himself as Fushiguro and asks about the object Yuji picked up. I might have missed something here, but why did Yuji pick up the cursed item in the first place? And why was it in a random storage box with no lock in the middle of nowhere? Did I miss that? Is it gonna be explained later on? I don't know. He explains about curses and exorcisms and curses and bait and curses and resentment and more curses. And Yuji is like, don't care about it, man. And Fushiguro is like, but where is it, dude? Tell me now. Yuji tells him that he gave it to his friends. And Fushiguro says, but why? They will die tonight. Whoa, that can't be good. We head back to the school that's open at night for some reason. Okay, forget about that. And Sasaki and Iguchi open the cursed item to discover it's a finger. Candle suddenly goes out and monsters crawl through the ceiling. So they leg it and hide somewhere. The monsters are stalking them around school 
and Iguchi has one on his face. Kushiguru then summons two wolves, one white and one black, and attacks the monsters, easily dispatching them until he rounds the corner and... <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be a Japanese anime without a scene like that, to be honest. Am I right? Anyway, there's groping and more groping and more groping. And Fushiguro is like, oh no, I'm too late. But then... <laughs> he grabs both his friends with ease while Fushiguro finishes off the monster. He also explains that his wolves are called Shikigami. Shikigami means form of magic in Japanese, so uh, there you go. Yuki locates the finger and Fushiguro explains that it levels up your curse power and that it's dangerous, so give it to me. Yuji is about to hand it over when, uh oh, a huge monster crashes through the roof and throws Fushiguro against the wall. His wolves dissipate and it's left to Yuji to fight the monster as best as he can. He dances away from the monster's attacks does a cheeky hit in the eye before recalling his grandfather's final words, save people. But then the monster gets him anyway. Just as he's about to be engulfed by the monster, he decides to throw the finger up in the air and eat it because Fushiguro told him that's the only way to kill a curse, which is with another curse. Good memory. He swallows the finger, gross, and Fushiguro says, oh no, it's poisonous, he's gonna die. Instead, Yuji one-shots the monster in a move that would make Saitama proud, and he suddenly grows two extra eyes, starts laughing like a madman, and then his voice changes. He looks over at the city below and says how he's gonna kill all the women and children. True gentleman. But then wait a goddamn freaking minute. Yuji starts taking back control of his body, which shocks Fushiguro. And so this gives him time to do some sorcery and exercise him. The end of episode one, season one. I don't know if there's season two actually, I need to check that. But then going back to the start of the episode, that must then be what happens next he's he's tied up and the guy's like which one are you the normal high school student yuji or are you this new guy who's got like four eyes on his face but yeah that's the first episode of uh, jujutsu kaisen finished and i tell you what i'm getting some bleach vibes granted i've only seen three anime from start to finish in my entire life so i don't have much to base it on but everything from the three best friends to mysterious monsters that can't be seen by the public to the main character getting his powers at the end of the episode to then kill a monster and save the day. This anime actually looks a bit more grotesque and possibly more adult in theme because I don't remember in Bleach uh, there being a guy talked about killing women and children at the end of the first episode. Anyway, I'm definitely going to be cracking out the next episode of this because uh, yeah, this is amazing. Let me know your opinions on this anime down below. Have you read the manga? Have you watched the anime? Are you watching the anime? Are you reading the manga? I just saw also that there's a full 24 episode arc in season one so let's hope that this lives up to expectations and becomes a really good anime anyway cheers for tuning in guys and um sayonara